Good morning, St. Mark's. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We will say the Gloria together. Glory. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who has taught us to keep all thy commandments by loving thee and our neighbor, grant us the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to thee with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from 2 Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, 
If only my Lord were the prophet who is in Samaria, he could cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give life or death that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, the, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elijah's house. Elisha sent a message, messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman came, became angry and went away, saying, I thought that you told me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would have his hand wave over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar the rivers of Damascus better than the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, Wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the words of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The word of the Lord. The proper response for this fourth Sunday after Pentecost is Psalm 30. We will read responsibly by the whole verse. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. For his wrath endures, but the twinkling of an eye has favor for a lifetime. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. A reading from the letter to the Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. 
Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time, if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking, whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your own town that clings to your feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from the heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, 
Do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, and Pentecost is the feast that marks the end of the Easter season and celebrates the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the apostles. Jesus died and has risen in the Easter season, and at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has come for us all. We are in the season that the church calls ordinary time, and it's a season when the lessons on Sunday teach of the growth of the church and the role the church plays in our communities and in the world. And as a note, that's why the hangings are green, to signify growth of the church. The readings are about the growth of the church from the beginning of the Jesus movement some 2,000 years ago and we ask ourselves, is the church relevant today? The church has always had to ask if we are relevant in our times. And as church attendance declines, we wonder, who is the church and why do we come? And what is the church's responsibility in the world? And because we are the church, what is our responsibility in the world and in our community today? In our gospel story today, Jesus sends out the 70, and they are to go ahead of Jesus. The smart guys, the commentaries, they write a lot about this number 70. In Genesis 10, 70 nations are listed. Moses appoints 70 elders to help him. The scholars mostly agree that the number 70 is related to the biblical number of nations so that the number shows the mission of the church to the nations. In our story, the disciples are sent to walk where Jesus intends to go. They go to places where Jesus will arrive someday. And the 70 are sent out in pairs and they walk together on their journey. Do you think we'd feel differently about this story if they had been sent out alone? And Jesus warns them, go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. And Jesus tells them directly, carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. This story brings up images of missionaries who come to our door are missionaries who travel to distant places to build communities and schools and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Missionary work is hard work, and no doubt, and it's brave work. And no doubt those lambs are sometimes in the midst of wolves, and I admire missionaries. But this is a scary story for the rest of us. For those of us who are not called to missionary work, today's lesson can be uncomfortable. If we're not gonna walk door to door, as this story tells us to do, then what are we gonna do? The answer is in Jesus' message. Jesus tells those who he knew, who he trusted, and who he sent, whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. What a wonderful message, peace to this house and they were instructed to bring the good news of the message of peace. Can you imagine the conversations the disciples must have had as they walked off two by two? They may have planned to talk about themselves. They may have planned, wanted to talk about their beliefs and how smart they were and how right they were in their thinking. No doubt, they doubted the message of peace. They were also instructed to eat what was put before them 
In, Jew in Jesus' day, Jewish dietary laws were strictly enforced. But in our story, the disciples were to eat what their hosts put before them. They were told how to accept the hospitality that was offered. Is there peace to be found in this instruction too? These disciples knew Jesus, for they had witnessed and walked with him on earth. They trusted Jesus, they were sent by Jesus, and they carried the message of peace. Peace is taken seriously in the Christian faith. We exchange the peace with each other after our common prayers every Sunday. Exchanging the peace, it's not a folksy greeting. It's a solemn liturgical rite placed between the liturgy of the word and communion, and we are to greet each other in peace and mean it. Peace, right? Maybe it's best explained by saying what it's not. It's not having false loyalties. It's not being attached to self-created divisions. We do not know peace when we quarrel over the King James Version or the Message Version of the Bible. We don't know peace when we use harsh words. We do not know peace when we relive old or even new hurts and slights. We do not know peace when we make the situations about ourselves. Peace does not live with envy, jealousy, or hatred. And how do we, as the church, live peace and bring it to the world? Well, we make every effort to bring peace to every situation, and our constant concern is to do what's right. And we must do so with gentleness of spirit and words. This isn't to say that we avoid conflict or situations that need to be addressed. It's to say that we approach this with peace and the love of Jesus in our hearts. And this is always easier said than done, or easier preached than done. In today's world, and especially as Episcopalians, we don't try and convert people. We don't lecture. We don't evangelize. Our responsibility is to bring priests and to live it and to say it and to share it. And how do we do this? Maybe by letting go of what we carry on our walk. Our story mentions shoes and a purse. Some worldly goods are necessary to live but the lesson is to let go of what we carry into each relationship. Are we about peace? Can we forgive? Can we get over ourselves and our egos and our need to be right? And this plays out on the personal level, the community level, and in the war of Ukraine. And by listening to this story today, and by listening to Jesus, those whom he knew and loved. He sent them in pairs to leave their worldly goods behind and to go ahead of him <clears throat> to bring peace to the kingdom of God for all. We are two, we're to know peace and bring peace, and our faith in Jesus, whom we know and love, yields a yearning for that peace in all that we do. So we too, we listen, we trust, we walk with each other, and maybe a good friend helps us to see when we are not at peace. And we strive for peace in all we do. For ourselves, our relationship with God and others, for our community and our world. And then we will be the people that Jesus has sent out and our church will be relevant in our times. Amen. Please stand as we affirm our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe
Please be seated or kneel as you prefer. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. I ask your prayers for St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Basin, and for the Diocese of Maypar, South Sudan. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God and in memory of Dan Bruner. Your own prayers and petitions may be added at this time. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Mark and all of thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of our people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning. As you're concluding the piece, let's not forget to turn around and wave at our digital members uh, who are joining us this morning from home. Uh, good morning. We're so pleased you're with us on this Independence Day weekend, and a special welcome to any visitors or guests that may be here. And speaking of visitors, it is a pleasure to welcome the Reverend Kristen Lee as our guest priest this morning. Most Sundays you will find her at St. Christopher's, our crosstown sister parish. So remember last week we talked about Bailey about to have her baby? Well, there's no about. Bailey, our parish secretary, gave birth to Valentine Butch Bowman on Tuesday evening. So she will be out for a few weeks now. And so that means our dynamic trio of Kathy Keck, Como Boyle, and Sue Alstrom will be covering the office uh, while Bailey is out on maternity leave. Um, at last report, mother and son and dad are all doing great and they're back home in Pine Bluffs. Um, something new next Sunday, we're starting a three-part Sunday afternoon series called Cultural Blind Spots. So next Sunday, two o'clock, Parish Hall, the first of these will be offered by Rick Ewig, a Wyoming historian, and it's gonna focus on corruption in the city of Cheyenne during the World War II years and how it impacted uh, the African American community, a part of our history that most Cheyenne folks are totally unaware of. So two o'clock, Parish Hall on the 10th, There'll be another event in July, excuse me, in August, and then we'll conclude that three-part series in September. It's a great way to invite someone to join you and, and introduce them to St. Mark's. Um, of course, the office will be closed tomorrow in observance of July 4th, and then Father Rick will be back in the office on Tuesday and life will slowly begin to return to normal. Um, and now, are there any birthdays or anniversaries? And if so, please come forward. I don't think we have any takers today, Kristen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own heaven.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should all, at all times and in all places, give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Creator of the light and the source of life, who has made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in the remembrance of me. Wherefore, our Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of the almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine. And that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of this most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fa fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And therefore we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. 
And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee thy, any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome at the altar. If you'd like to receive, please hold out your hand. If you'd like a blessing, please just cross your arms. Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of our Lord and Savior, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our blood and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven.
body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Please join me for the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty, May the, road, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.